Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! And on a rainy, miserable Labor Day for the 66th time from Paradise Studios, I am Cyclone and you are in the cage with Cyclone. Guess what? 66 episodes? It's kind of a big deal because if you are a fan of Star Wars, it was Order 66, where Palpatine took out all the freaking Jedi. Obviously, except for Yoda and, and Obi-Wan, but it was Order 66, so it's Episode 66. How about that? Um, It is, like, seriously, Brooklyn was, like, underwater. My sneakers are, like, sludge. My socks are soaked. My feet are like grapes. Oy. But guys, we have so freaking much to get to today. We're going to be doing a new type of Mount Rushmore. We, we've touched like every possible Mount Rushmore top four thing in combat sports except for one thing. And we're going to do that today. We got some MMA stuff. We got lots of boxing. And we're going to obviously talk AEW. And we're going to do all that, guys. But first, I want you guys to click share. Please. I really do need you guys to click share. I want you guys to check out CycloneComedy.com. Okay? Because guess what? Not this month, but next month. The Cyclone Variety Show returns after another very long hiatus. Um, guys, EffectiveAggression.com. Best place for shirts. Best place for autographed gloves. It's a perfect gift for your loved one or for someone you don't love. Put the glove on and punch them. Either way, it's a win-win because you're helping a good... Cu- a very good charity. That's the word I was looking for. That's the C word I was looking for. Guys, but we're going to get this whole big shingding started right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Check it out. Hey, you got the guts. Step in the cage. Let's... Like I said, start off with some wrestling. Let's get it out of the way. Let's talk some AEW. All of you guys, I'm pretty sure by, by, by the response that I've seen across social media, really, really enjoyed AEW. I liked it. I didn't... Utterly enjoy it like you guys, like a lot of you people. Because what I look for in wrestling is a little bit more than most of you. Um, I give it a solid B, okay? So B, B minus in that range. Um, Here's the thing. What it seems that wrestling has become is high spot, high spot, High spot, high spot. There's no stories. Guy, I want 
my wrestlers to tell stories. Because here's the deal. When you're compete, basically in the same marketplace as MMA and boxing, well, let's face it, the, everything is real. Unless you want to be known as a performance art and not a sport entertainment, you better damn well tell a story. And you better damn well make it a good story in the ring. You have to get us invested as fans. Why else are we going to watch a bunch of high spots? Because, uh, listen, at one point, the only person to jump off the top rope was Jimmy Snooker. Then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, the first person to, to, to walk along the top rope consistently was Taker. Now everybody jumps off the top rope, everybody walks the top rope, everybody does a moonsault, triple axle, quadruple lutz, into the crowd, over the barricade. Everyone's doing these. There's nothing special about pro wrestling. The writing sucks. The writing sucks in Hollywood. The writing sucks in wrestling. And we know it sucks in the WWE right now. And honestly, it's across the board in all, in all wrestling organizations, and that includes AEW, for a percentage, for a certain part, it's no good. Okay, the only two that told a story, as far as I'm concerned, for the entire AEW card, was uh, Riho and Sheeta. Those two Asian young ladies, and, and it seems like Asian ladies and Asian guys, for that matter, across sports, and especially combat sports, had a hell of a weekend. Um, and we'll get to more of that later. The fact of the matter is, they were the best as far as I'm concerned. Look, Cody and Sean Spears, it was disappointing. It left me flat. Okay. And speaking of Cody, I am I am dumbfounded how in the world and, and, and maybe like if Frankie Love is watching or, or Rudy Asher or Bernard Joseph Green. If one of you cats is watching, maybe you guys can type in and explain this to me. You're going to set off pyros with animals around? You know you can't control. You can tell a person, hey, listen, don't be shocked. Don't jump. That, that's one thing. You can't tell an animal. Okay, hence Cody's dog Pharaoh getting spooked. They're lucky that stupid freaking horse that Adam Page rode in on didn't get spooked. Because I'll tell you what, a dog getting spooked is one thing. A horse getting spooked, you don't want to be around that when that happens. And with that, I don't know how, and I don't know why, and I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would not be shocked if PETA, the, you know, you know those brilliant people, the people of, for ethical treatment of animals, they might chime in on this. Listen, they've, they, they've marched to protest against, you know, horse carriage rides in Central Park, which is quote-unquote Romantic, I don't know, because I'm not a romantic type of guy. But if you let a, a wrestle go riding down the, 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 the aisle on a horse and have pyros go off, I can't see the people at Peter sitting idly by and letting that just go. We're like, oh, okay, it's wrestling, we're going to let that go. Now look. It wasn't the card wasn't all bad as far as I'm concerned. The bringing in of Santana and Ortiz, A.K.A. L.A.X. 
a.k.a. the Bariquas, a.k.a. EYFBO from the Warriors of Wrestling. You know what? Frankie, let me tell you something. If that would have happened, Frankie Love, I'm telling you there would be lawsuits up the yin freaking yang. Um, I don't... I don't say the whole card sucked. I mean, look, like I said, Rita and uh, uh, Rio and Shido were the highlight as far as I'm concerned. I didn't mind the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers. Look, it, it is what it is. But like I said, all it is is one high spot after another. And I, I don't need to see that nonstop for three hours. If I'm dropping down 50 bucks on a pay-per-view, I don't want to see that. Okay? I really don't. I want to see storylines where, where, where I get invested and I'm like, oh, my God, I need to see more. Now, I'm going to love to see when uh, Riho takes on uh, um, Nyla Rose. I was going to say Nyla Jax. When she takes on Nyla Rose, that's gonna, that is a storyline all in itself. Big monster, tiny Asian. It's like the reverse. It's like Godzilla comes to female wrestling. As far as I'm concerned. And it's something I'm going to look forward to. Um, I get why Jericho got the belt put on him. You're going to TNT. You, you, need a, you need a known commodity to have your strap. Otherwise, I really would have preferred them go with Hangman and build with him. Build, build through the youth. Build through the unknown. But uh, I'm not going to complain about it. I, I understand it. And that, my friends, is what I thought about AEW this weekend. Um, hi, Ivan. I love Nova Scotia. I have three friends that live up there. And as a Jew, I love your locks. How about that? Hey, Tashina. How are you? Welcome aboard. Um, anyways, I just want to move on to so much freaking boxing news. Obviously, the, the big boxing story coming out late last, late last night, late last night, very early this, this morning, this morning, um, if you were sleeping or not, uh, Javante Davis vacating his WBA Super Featherweight title, announcing that he is going up to lightweight. And you know why? We all know why he's going up to lightweight. Okay. He wasn't running away from Tevin Farmer, although Leonard Elby and Floyd Mayweather dropping down the rules that they knew Tevin Farmer was never going to take. He was never going to accept their stupid rules. Okay. So he now puts a target on Lomachenko. On a weekend where Vassal Lomachenko not got stunned, but he was caught off guard. He got cracked a couple of times against Cool Hand Luke. Uh, I was going to say Luke Saunders, the MMA fighter. Uh, cool Hand Luke Campbell. Um those rules that the Mayweathers and Ellaby like to throw around, that's not going to work with our, that's not going to work with, with, with Eddie Hearn. That's not going to work with Team Lomachenko, okay? Because when it comes to the A-side, as Floyd likes to say, Loma is the A-side, especially against Javante Tank Davis. Loma is, as far as I'm concerned, a number one pound for pound, better than T.C. Terrence Crawford, better than Errol Spence, better than Sean Porter. On par with Manny Pacquiao, I, you know Manny Pacquiao, that fountain of youth. But I'm telling you, those stunts that that 
the money team pulls with everybody else? Uh-uh. Now, as far as Lomachenko is concerned, he picked up the uh, WBC belt to go with his uh, WBO and WBA belts. Look, Luke Campbell is a solid fighter. He is a, a, a high-level fighter. He gave Loma a scare in the first two rounds. Now, obviously, once Loma got his feet under him, he cracked him from every single angle. And I'll tell you what. Luke Campbell did something that no other fighter ever has done in preparing for Lomachenko. Now, normally when you spar, you spar two or three fighters with you. But Luke Campbell was sparring three fighters at a time. That's sick. That is like Bruce Lee martial arts movie stuff. And and knowing Lomachenko's speed and the angles he comes at, that's what you need to do. Just Luke Campbell isn't that oomph level that he could beat Lomachenko. But he's on the right path. Maybe that's th- that's what it takes to beat Vassal. You need to be in there at the same time sparring with three, four, and five guys at the same time. Punches coming from every single spot. Maybe that's what it takes. Who knows? Who knows if Javante Davis actually fights Lomachenko? If that's what Javante does. Floyd puts in five guys and says, go get him, Javante. It's a possibility. Listen, sports is a copycat system. No matter what sport it is, whatever succeeds, everybody jumps on it like white on rice. And Luke Campbell might have just found a formula that can take out Lomachenko. It's just you got to be that much better. Um, what else? What else happened in boxing? Tyson Fury, the, the, the co-main on that card, Tyson Fury's cousin, Huey Fury, got cracked by Povetkin. And look, you Fury size bothered Povetkin. It seemed across the board in boxing, all the, 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 the favorites right off the bat were getting rocked. Well, not rocked, getting their cages were getting rattled, let's say. Okay, we could have had a whole heap of lot of lot of upsets this past weekend in boxing, but we actually only had one. That's going to be coming up in a second. Look, Povetkin is on another level. He's he's one A. He's not that one level. He's that one A level. He'll eventually be. Going after the, those belts, as far as Yui Fury is concerned, the only thing going for Yui Fury is the fact that he's 24 years old. But the downside is he got beat by Joseph Parker, he got beat by Pulev, and now he's beaten by Povechkin. Yui Fury, I want to say, is the. Fifth level down. I don't know if he's ever going to be losing to those three guys in that second tier, that 1A tier, let alone that top level where his cousin is. I, I can't see that happening. 
But like I said, the fact that he's only 24 is his one his one lifeline that he's holding on to where he still has a lot more to go in his career. So we'll see what happens. Um the one upset that did happen that that if you would have gone to the bank you could have made a fortune on this. Now, that being said, it wasn't like it was Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson, 42 to one shot. But it was a big upset. Michael Zerafoot taking out, uh, I was going to say Joe Horn, <laughs> taking out Jeffrey Horn. Um, wow. When someone that doesn't have your skill set outclasses you, drops you in the second round, Frustrates you and then TKOs your tushy in round nine. It's a back to the drawing board for Jeffrey Horn. He is a cat that needs to look deep down inside of himself. He needs to reevaluate what's going on in his career, what's going on in his life. Now, that being said, where does Michael Zarafa go? He, like Andy Ruiz, is riding a high. You can r- ride that pony for as long as it can go. It don't stop. Um, and it was something disappointing that actually happened in boxing. And... I hate to say because I like PBC, even though PBC is up for sale. PBC is probably going to be bought by Dana White and Zufa and and turn it into Zufa Boxing. But that's a whole other topic that I'm not going to get into because that opens up a whole other can of worms. And I don't want to open up a can of worms right now. I really don't. We don't need to mess up the table. With worms. That being said, the PBC this past Saturday, I don't know why this card was on Fox. I don't know why. You want to put something representative of good talent, of good skill, on free television to the masses. This was not it. Not by a long shot. Um, Erislev Landy, Lara fighting Canelo Alvarez's cousin. Ah, Canelo Alvarez's brother. Between cousins and brothers this weekend, who knows? Um, Ramon Alvarez. Ramon comes in overweight. He leaves his head center line. He's getting pummeled. Okay. Arislandi almost puts him out of the ring. Then TKOs him in the second round. As the ref is jumping in, Alvarez's corner is throwing in the towel. If you come that unprepared, especially with your brother being Canelo Alvarez, you should have a little bit more respect, not only for yourself, your family, but for the goddamn sport. You don't come in missing weight, especially when the title's on the line. And you don't leave your head center line. You don't allow yourself to be pummeled, especially in round two. Very, very disappointing. But, uh, that's wrestling and boxing. Guess what, guys? From here on out, we head to the cage. We head to some MMA stuff. Now, first, you guys have to go to Psyche Prods on Facebook. C-Y-C-I-E-P-R-O-D-Z. Click like, click follow, enter a raffle. We got a raffle, UFC 242, this weekend coming up. 
A monster prize, by the way, is up for grabs. Every Monday, we got a question raffle. You're going to want to enter and win. Free prize to somebody. Who doesn't like free? I need you guys to go to EffectiveAggression.com and make a purchase. Say Cyclone sent you. It's a good deed. It will make your heart feel good. You will put a smile on someone's face if you do that. Um, but we're going to, like I said, MMA after this. But we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. All right, so look, not only at AEW were Asian young ladies at the forefront, but UFC China, UFC Fight Night China, um, I'm forgetting the city already, but here's the deal as far as that is concerned. It set something up that the majority of you that love MMA have not even considered. And I have, because I love to go deep into stuff. Weili Zhang winning is absolutely awesome. Look, Asian fighters, I don't know why, and I wish to God someone can explain to me why, are always overlooked. Constantly overlooked. And they are some of the best. I tell you guys constantly, watch one championship. Watch Ryzen. These fighters are insanely talented. You, you need to get involved in this stuff. Um, Wei Li Zhang is going to hold on to that belt, I think. Unless her and Jessica Andrade trade it back and forth for a while. Which... I could see that too. Because let's face it, Jessica Andrade is still a Bulldog. But the Bulldog got rushed and taken out in under a minute. Not only that, Li Jing Yang in the co main event, taking out um, Elizu Zaleski, also set something up. Now, you're asking me right now, Cyclone, what the hell are they setting up? Both of them having fought short period of time. Now, true, uh, Li Zilang Lang took a little bit of a beating for a couple rounds. But the UFC always looked to put Khabib, Connor in New York because of the big Irish population, the big Russian population. That's a drawing card. You always want to draw what's in the particular city. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I give you evidence A, B, C, and D. New York City has, outside of San Francisco, the biggest Chinatown outside of China. She was only fighting for 42 seconds. I can see them having a fast turnaround with Zhang. And not rematching Jessica and George. I could see them saying, you know what, Jessica? Hold off for a while on your rematch. You get it. Maybe if she wins. But I can see her getting matched up against the returning... Strawway Queen, the one, the only, Joanna Champion. Now, look, I hate Joanna staying at Strawway. I want her at Flyway, even though she's just not big enough to be in Flyway. That weight cut kills her. The fact of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen, her at Strawway against... You put, as the co-main, because the main is probably going to be Colby and Usman. 
you put Weili Zhang and Joanna for the strawweight championship as the co-main event, you're talking something barn burning. Pier six brawl. That gets my nipples hard. And that's what's important. That is a storyline that will draw you in. That needs to happen at Madison Square Garden. And I got a feeling it will. But here is the highlight of episode 66. Like I said, we covered Mount Rushmore's for, from the best managers, the best wrestlers, the best MMA fighters, the best boxers, the best everything. Now we're going to do something completely different. This Mount Rushmore, ladies and gentlemen, is of the best combat sports video games. Okay, so starting it off at number four is UF, uh, UF, is WWE 2K18. I think the graphics are solid. I, I think the movements from the wrestlers are solid in the game. Oh my God, the returning Brian Joseph Haran. Hello, sir. How's your trip, you lucky SOB? Anyways, like I said, WWE 2K18 is my fourth best combat sport video game on my Mount Rushmore. Number three, we head to Sweet Science. Fight Night Round 4, Boxing, is the third. Here's, here's why it's the third best video game, guys. While the graphics aren't as good as the WWE game, it's really solid. You, 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 when you, you land a solid jab, no, it was not better, Brian. When you land a solid jab, you see the ripple in the facial muscles. That's what makes it enjoyable. As far as I'm concerned, the second best video game in combat sports, without a doubt, EA Sports UFC 3. And it's because it adds Dana White. It adds Joe Rogan. It adds Bruce Lee. It adds Bruce Buffer. All his fighters. It has Snoop Dogg in it. Look, guys, if you want to beat the piss out of Dana White... You finally get the chance to do it. You want to smack around Joe Rogan? You can do it. You think you're bad enough to take on Bruce Lee? Step in the cage against him. And ladies and gentlemen, the number one, hands down, combat sports video game is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Now look. We can talk, you know, Evander Holyfield, Real Deal Boxing as an honorary mention. There's other sports video games that are honorable mentions. As Brian Joseph Horan is mentioning all the ones that are mediocre, okay. But Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, hands down. Even though it's hokey, the graphics stink. It's still number one. You want to know why? There's something just classic about that game. Who doesn't love Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? Like I said, the graphics stink. You, you really don't move. You really don't do anything. But it was fun. Nobody did not enjoy Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Who didn't like gl kicking the hell out of Glass Joe? Okay. Or Von Kayser with that wild, long, like, Dennis Eckersley, Raleigh Fingers type mustache. Okay. Um, who didn't like the great tiger who, who had the ruby in the turban and could, like, teleport all over the ring? That was fun stuff. Nah, you know what? It, but another one, you know, hey, so PowerPoint's doing, nah, not really. Um, I put it on the lower end, maybe like seventh or eighth best. Um, who didn't like Bald Bull, 
who always came charging out, like, like a Jessica Andrade, like an Amanda Nunes. Bobo will always come charging out, and you'd crack him. Oh, my God, that was so awesome. Obviously, when you got beat everybody in your face, Tyson, you always lost. But you had a smile on your face as you lost. Because that game was awesome. And obviously, the best fighter, as far as I'm concerned, from all the characters of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! was King Hippo. And I'm not saying that because I'm fat. But King Hippo was absolutely awesome. You punched him in the face, and his boxing trunks fell down. Not that I'm into that type of stuff. But that was awesome. Who didn't like seeing a fat guy's trunks fall down? Now, obviously, they didn't show any, you know, like, graphic stuff. But that stuff was just so much fun. Who didn't like Mike Tyson's punch out? That's why it's number one. Hands down. You cannot prove me wrong on that. You can't do it. I am 100% right on this. Hmm. Now, speaking of video games... As we segue along, we're going to have some games coming up. But first, I want you guys to click share. Please. Both Brian's, Haran and LaPierre, click share. Especially you, Haran. You haven't been, you've been out of the country. You've been on the other side of the planet traveling. Mr. Everybody Loves Brian. Click share, brother. Check out effective aggression and when we come back it's game time I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gastelum. This is Mark Gumbel. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man. Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock and you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. On this day? Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Okie dokie, hello, Dr. Al Titus, by the way. See, I always give shout outs. Um, so on this day, five birthdays, which is good that we had a birthday cake up. Five of them, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Curran is 42 today. Um, Alasso Sakara is 38. The older brother of Jared Rochel, Jake Rochel, is 37. And turning 36 is PFL, former light heavyweight champion, current broadcaster, Sean O'Connell. And the fifth one is in boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, turning the ripe old age of 54 years old is Lennox Lewis. That's what's going on in today's day in MMA and boxing and birthday history. Now, you know what? By the way, if you notice, I'm not wearing my glasses. For some reason, I don't feel like I need them right now. But I think it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. Let's give away a prize. Let's have a raffle. All righties, ladies and gentlemen, we got four questions this week. And the only regular that sent in a question was Susan Walker. So we might just have a first time winner today. The first question is from John Lynn. Do any UFC, you know what, I, I kind of need the glasses now. Do any UFC fans actually like the ESPN Plus deal? Oh, well, I don't know what other people like, but um, it's honestly not meant for the fans. It's meant for the company. The company makes more money. That's why the deal is the deal. Um, does anyone like Honestly, I don't mind it. I've seen worse deals where, where the fans have been screwed worse. Um, but I don't 
I'm not exactly thrilled with it. I don't know about how many others are. Um, question number two comes from Jathan McCormick. Should fighters coming out of retirement get a ranked fight or pick them fight automatically? Fighters that retire should stay retired. They shouldn't be able to pick a fight. They shouldn't be able to get a ranked fight. They should get nothing, as Connor would say. They get nothing. I don't want to see. Once you throw that R word out, once you retire, once you hang them up, I don't want to see him come back at all. Now, that's not going to happen because I'm not the supreme god, although I kind of wish I was. Should they? No. They should have to get, like, w at least one unranked fighter and then maybe a ranked fighter. Um, question number three comes from Jason Hatcher. How many fans missed the fights live in China and had to go back and watch it later? Well, look, here's the thing, Jason. Um, I'm someone that watches Fight Nights Global from Russia. I watch Ryzen. I watch One Championship. I'm used to being up around the clock because I can't sleep. I have sleep issues. So I'm able to watch those fights. Now, I would imagine on, on a Saturday early morning, a lot of people miss the fights live because everybody likes to go out Friday drinking, having a good time. But you see, I don't do that because I'm a hermit. I don't go out. I'm antisocial. Which is, once again, opening up a whole other can of worms, which I don't want to open. Because that would just be more worms on the table. And unless they were gummy worms, I don't want them on the table. And nobody else here wants gummy worms on the table because they would make the table sticky. Um, but I would imagine a lot of people missed the fights live and had to watch them back. And they regret it because you got to watch fights live. You just got to do it. Um, anyways, question number four comes from Susan Walker. Susan's question is, do you think there should be a trilogy fight between DC and Stipe? Being that he's already beaten Engano. Look, Susan. I know who it's not going to be next. It's not going to be JDS. JDS right now is in Brazil doing the Brazilian version of Dancing with the Stars. So that puts him out of title contention for a while. Should Francis Ngannou be next? Should it be the rematch of Francis and Stipe next? Yes. That's what should be next. Then, whoever wins that, then let DC take on whoever wins. If Stipe wins, let that trilogy happen then. If Francis beats Stipe, DC has to fight Francis as his final fight. But that's the way it should go down. Will it go down that way? Once again, I don't know. Because, quite frankly, I... Don't call the shots. I really don't. I wish I would. Now, you know what? Let's pick ourselves a winner out of one of these four. No, Bernard. Rhonda, let me just, before we do this, let me just explain to Bernard Joseph Green. Rhonda walked away because Rhonda's the type of girl that she can't have it her way. She's going to take her ball, and she's going to leave the playing field. Okay. She left MMA for one reason and one reason only. She got smoked by Holly. She got smoked by Amanda. She got smoked by Holly. 
She was getting beat. The, 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 the playbook on how to beat Ronda was written and the blueprint was followed perfectly. Okay, that's why Ronda left. And Ronda's a crossover person where she didn't need to be punched in the face for real. She can do the, the, the wrestling thing. She can do the acting thing, although she ripped up her finger on, you know, uh, the Fox show, uh, 911. That's why Ronda left. Because she was getting beat. For no other reason. And she couldn't take it. So, like I said, let's go find ourselves a winner. The winner is numero four, Susan Walker. Long time not winning. Susan Walker is back on a winning streak. Guys. Congratulations, Susan. I will ship your prize out this week. Unless you want me to hold out a tab. Which it will be shipped out next week. Which actually might be best for you, Susan. But I will talk to you about that. Now, I shall be back in 10,200 minutes. For those of you in the class that are slow, that's how many minutes are in a week. Okay, so. In a few minutes, speaking of minutes... It's the Newman Show. Dennis Newman is in the house. House. Ho. Um, so, guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, in my road doggy dog voice, just because all of you guys are not athletes doesn't mean any of you cannot be athletic supporters. Boom shakalaka. <laughs>